Hope you all enjoy uh, watching the the uh, the glorious task, which is connecting laptop to uh, uh, <laughs> connecting laptop to the um, uh, to the to the thing here, uh, thing projector. I, I'm going to apologize. Uh, probably everything that comes out of my mouth is going to be ridiculous because uh, it's been one of those really full days today, and I don't even know what my own name is right now, um, uh, which is not entirely true. So. Uh, thanks for coming um, uh, to hear us talk. We're going to chat about uh, a thing called uh, uh, Open Cloud, an idea called Open Cloud Exchange from um, Massachusetts Open Cloud. I'm going to talk, uh, talk a bit at the top and then pass it over to Christy. Uh, but first, just to introduce myself. Hi, my name is Monty. Uh, I work in the office of the CTO at Red Hat, uh, and people tell me that I uh, am responsible for various things in OpenStack, which should terrify everybody. Um, uh, but uh, I guess there's uh, there's life. Uh, you want to introduce? I'm Christy. I'm a software engineer with uh, MOC. Yeah, and something something Keystone something something. Oh you yeah, know. Uh, yeah I also whatever, work yeah. upstream on Keystone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so. Uh, this we're gonna gonna chat about, um, and uh, uh, also for those of you who know my tendency to run over time on presentations, um, uh, given that we're starting a little bit late, that's uh, even even more so. And what's best is when I when I spend half of the time of the talk talking about how I'm gonna go over time. Um, so it's really a self fulfilling prophecy. Um, uh, but I wouldn't want to leave anybody disappointed who's looking forward to seeing me try and squeeze in too much uh, content in a thing. But anyway, we're going to talk about uh, cloud landscape uh, that's out there, uh, which drives um, use cases for, for this idea of an open cloud exchange. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the, um, can we still call it the Massachusetts Open Cloud, or are we just supposed to call it the MOC now? The MOC or MOC. the Mass Open Cloud. The Mass Open Cloud. Yeah, the Mass right. Open Cloud. That definitely makes it better. It's, it's too long. Yeah. The <laughs> something, something, something. Yeah. It's, it, so it, the thing that formerly known as the Massachusetts Open Cloud, uh, which apparently has been rebranded because uh, that's too, too much. Uh, and, and then uh, <laughs> Chris is going to talk about what they've done, lessons learned, and, and where we might be able to, to go next with that. Um, so, uh, so I'm sure we're all aware that there are these things called clouds. Um, uh, if you are at this point in the day at this conference not yet uh, aware of the concept of IaaS clouds, uh, I'm, I actually really like to talk to you because I'd like to figure out how you've made it here <laughs> without, uh, without that. Um, uh, by and large, um, there's, uh, there's an interesting, and we, you know, uh, uh, Mark talked this morning in, in the keynote about the sort of power of open collaboration and where we get all these different companies to get together and work on the software, right, which is fantastic and awesome. Um, the clouds themselves that are out there, especially in the public cloud space, are typically run by one company, um, uh, which is uh, sort of uh, potentially unfortunate if, uh, if you if you think that a single company might be a, a bottleneck or a, uh, a, a dangerous um, uh, a part of your, of your chain. Um, those companies are typically pretty secretive about operational practices. We get really excited when somebody gets up on the stage uh, and they, they talk about like, the specifics of their deployment, like we ran these many cores and we, we, we deployed it on this specific hardware profile. And you know, uh, I remember that the San Diego uh, Summit, Troy Toman from Rackspace got up and like gave a bunch of specifics and everybody's like, oh my god, he told us exactly what they're doing and like people freaked out. Um, uh, and, and so there's, it's, it's tougher, we've gotten really good with open source. Open operations is a completely new idea. We do it a bit in the OpenStack infrastructure team, which is the team that runs the developer tooling for OpenStack. Lots of people think that we run OpenStack, which we do not do. <laughs> we have no idea what we're doing there. Um, uh, but it's a new thing. Like people aren't used to sharing and collaborating in, in once you get to the operations layer, right? Like it's not a thing that they do. Um, uh, and that means that, uh, that means that our exposure to information about how to optimize things, how to make things better at that layer is, is, is less, right? We can, we know how to optimize software. We know how to collaborate on optimizing software, but we don't know as much other than anecdotally, if you happen to go get beer with the right person, you know, you might learn something about how to optimize the operations of things, but that's not really a scalable process for life, um, uh, unless you really like beer, um, which I guess I'm in Germany, so uh, I should assume uh, that we all do. Um, uh, and, and ultimately, even when people are running OpenStack, you can still wind up with, with vendor lock-in. There's things that OpenStack doesn't do, 
um, uh, and we'll, we'll mention a couple of those, uh, but you, you get locked into to various aspects of those uh, extra things unless you very explicitly tie yourself only to to that um, uh, to the to the, the core OpenStack pieces, um, and that can be hard to do depending on on where you're at. Um, and even in those, even the, with the folks with the best of intention, there there's thing, there's holes they're having to fill in that just don't exist in the in the upstream thing, and so you can't blame them. Like it's not it's not a it's not a uh, they're not trying to to put you in a bad position, but it's it's still kind of there. Um, so this idea came up, um, and I I golly I, uh, I think it was the first Vancouver summit is the first place that Oren, um, uh, I, also the, the first Vancouver summit, the first Boston summit, we're repeating ourselves too much. I gotta like indicate which of the times we were in a city. Um, and again, I'm just talking about myself. Uh, uh, it came up with this idea of, of, uh, of uh, uh, we're missing some words on some of those clouds, aren't we? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I don't, I don't know where the words went. Um, uh, I was pretty sure there was words there. Sorry about that. Um, uh, but this idea that rather than just have one company run one cloud uh, and, and operate that cloud and have the, we all know how like you, pe different people are providing software services on top of a particular cloud. Like there's, you know, lots of people, you know, uh, deliver services on top of, you know, Amazon and Google and, and those things. Um, can you have a collaborative uh, environment where different companies can provide the underlying IaaS services into into a uh, into what what he called a, an open cloud exchange, right? So it's it's uh, in the in the in the realm of like a like a stock exchange, right? Like so that there's a marketplace for for those services. So you might have two or three or four different storage vendors, for instance, all having storage service implementations underneath the underside of that cloud and that a, a user of that cloud can then select, I want to get some storage from this vendor or that vendor or, or this other vendor, right? Is that, is that even possible? So that was the sort of uh, impetus uh, for, for trying, to, trying to work on this and, and trying to, uh, uh, to dig in. Um, so the, the open cloud exchange is, is, a, is about sort of solving, solving this, that you can have these different participants show up, uh, stand up different services. Uh, and, and make them available to a, to a user base. Um, this, this allows us to, to have people collaborate much in the same way that we've been trying to pioneer in OpenStack development land. I don't know, pioneer is a, is a strong word, I apologize. Uh, but we've been focusing in, in the OpenStack on people collaborating across uh, organization uh, on the development of things to collaborate uh, on service offerings, right? To actually be able to, uh, to run that. Um, you know, potentially reducing cost, uh, you know, uh, access to, to data, especially, um, uh, you know, especially this is uh, um, sort of come out of university engagements. You've got lots of people doing research. You've got those sorts of activities that aren't necessarily trying to monetize directly the services. They just want to, they want to work with each other on these, on these things, right, and, and be able to facilitate that. Um, and, and also, and we've got a, a, a little bit more in depth in a, in a later slide on this, but uh, that, that we can actually get a, a better feedback loop, right? So that, uh, you, know, uh, if, you know, Morgan and I are, are working on software upstream, neither one of us happen to be running that software in production, right? And so we're, we're filtering feedback from users through maybe a vendor and then through another person and then there's a bug report and you're like, oh, I'd like to know some more information about how that's working. Can I see your operational logs? And they're like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna happen. Um, uh, uh, so that's, uh, that's kind of, that's kind of tricky. Um, uh, uh, so, and, and this is, this has, this has, has it, it can be important even if this isn't like a global scale cloud, right? Like a lot of people uh, that I, that I talk to when we talk about um, cloud things get really caught up in the, you know, are you, are you competing directly with Amazon with this cloud? And I'm like, well, okay, we don't have to all have, it's not necessary for every cloud we spin up to be, uh, to be at that size. Um, uh, we, can, we can collaborate on, on the things that are hard uh, and, uh, and do that. So um, I think I actually said all, everything on that slide in the previous one. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, uh, so the, um, uh, when, we're, when we're, so as, like I was saying with the Morgan thing, as we move forward in these things, as we, as we look into this, having access to, have, having collaborative community access to, to data about real users, you know, access to, to scale, um, most of the, a shocking number of the people who, who are developing OpenSAC don't have access to 
bare metal resources, and in fact, the eight gig VMs that we give them to, uh, to run integration testing uh, for OpenStack in, in the gate uh, is, is often free. Those are actually sized because we know that we can count on somebody having a laptop with eight gigs of RAM, um, and we want people to be able to debug the OpenStack software on their laptop. Um, uh, most people run clouds that are larger than a single laptop. Um, that might be shocking, uh, <laughs> but access to scale, I think, is, uh, is, is a really important piece in this, and it is a real missing piece of the puzzle in terms of, uh, of, of, uh, of completing the loop. Um, uh, those of you who are familiar, uh, it, it strikes me that that's actually a really old book right now. Are you, were you born when that book came out? <laughs> when did it come out? <laughs> uh, let's say 99? Yeah, it was. Okay, thank God. No worries. <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> He's young. Just, you have those moments where you're like, oh God, that book's been around a long time. Um, <laughs> crap. Um, uh, but, you know, the, sort, of the, sort of the final reason of, of why we care about this is that um, we don't even necessarily know about all of, all of the things that can happen as we open up collaboration across, across communities on new topics, right? We, I don't think that any of us, when we started OpenStack, would have imagined the size and scale, and I certainly wouldn't have imagined that AT&T would be making 5G calls uh, from outside of a Faraday cage uh, on stage on top of an OpenStack cloud when we were doing that, but that's, those are those things you can't, you can't predict them, like they're, they're what comes um, out, of, uh, out of there. So, you know, so, so Cathedral and, and Bazaar style, we've got these, we've got these, big, uh, these big giant proprietary public clouds uh, you know, there's, there's more of them than the U.S. tech press likes to, uh, to mention, uh, but they're, they're still there. Um, uh, and then, so we're, but we're starting to see some of these things over here on the, uh, on the right-hand side. So we've got Mass Open Cloud, uh, which Christy's going to talk more about. Uh, we've got other, other services that are people are, are starting to provide, uh, the Open Data Hub project. Uh, uh, there's a third person who's supposed to be up on stage here that bailed on us who would have talked more about that. Uh, so it's... Uh, I'm, I'm hoping he's watching the live stream of this video uh, and just know we're thinking about you. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're sorry you're not here. Um, so that's, that's why we care. And I think I've already, I've already kind of covered a, a, a bit of this, um, but we, uh, we run, as, as, um, as I talked about this morning with this also, we run a crap load of, of, of CI inside of OpenStack, probably an unprecedentedly large amount of it. It's, it's kind of an insane amount of that. But the thing we don't do is we don't, ha we don't, we don't have the, the, the delivery deployment part of that down. There isn't a cloud that all of those patches are flowing into that the OpenStack developers have access to, right? Like some of them are running clouds, some of them are not running, running clouds. So, um, so there's, there's pieces. We do lots of synthetic testing. We try and do our best to, to, to set these things up. But it, it, we're, we're missing a feedback loop. And so if there is a community-oriented uh, cloud, uh, a, couple, a few years ago, um, HP donated uh, a couple racks worth of hardware to the OpenStack project, right? And it was, uh, we actually, so with the, infra, the OpenStack infrastructure team actually did run uh, an, an OpenStack cloud. Uh, it was really weird because we told people we don't run OpenStack clouds and then we were running an OpenStack cloud. But it wasn't for the purposes, it wasn't for this, right? It wasn't for the purpose of, of be having an open and transparent uh, operational loop so that as things are flowing through the community, they can flow into a running cloud and we can get, we can get feedback from them. It was so that we could have more testing resources, right? They, it, was, it was a special purpose cloud that we just used to get more VM capacity because that was all that was able to, to be given to us at that point in time. So there isn't a equivalent place where the community can collaborate on those sorts of, of, of issues other than just talking to each other uh, over, over email because of their things that they're, uh, their actual things. And, and as I'm sure we all know, there's, uh, there are issues that, that don't show up um, at, at eight gigs uh, of RAM of size. Um, <laughs> that also might be shocking, um, but you know, things, things like that database index is not good enough. Um, uh, you know, if you've only got a thousand records in a test database, you're not going to notice that. <laughs> um, might be an important thing. Uh, in fact, that's actually uh, several years ago, Rackspace had a third-party CI that was running all of the Nova migrations on their actual production data, a copy of their production database on every change because of this very reason. Like, we kept landing database migrations that when they went to roll them out into the public cloud, like, took the cloud down for, like, you know, uh, a period of time, and they got, I don't know, they found that frustrating? Um, uh, so anyways, this is a, a, a thing, just, just being, uh, having access to a quantity, having access to a larger thing 
um, uh, is, a, is, a, is a potentially great thing. Um, so that said, if you run such a cloud, uh, it's, it's, it's a really great collaborative effort. There's, there's, uh, there's use cases that are gonna be good for running on top of that cloud, and there's use cases that are not gonna be good for running on top of that cloud. I probably wouldn't run uh, AT&T's 5G mobile network on top of the, the community-operated cloud. Uh, not because it's not gonna be good software, but just because, I mean, let's be honest, it, this, is, this is gonna be in a more experimental state, right? Um, being able to use that cloud to sort of like the one that we ran in, in Infra a few years ago uh, for a minute until the hardware got put into a data center in Houston and then it was flooded in Houston and then we didn't have hardware anymore because of the hurricanes. Um, uh, apparently they were also just not even on rack. They were just sitting on top of each other in a, in a stack. It was very strange. Um, uh, so that's being able to provide that to the community for CI CD is, is a really great thing because we already have like eight, nine different clouds. So if one of them goes away for a minute, it's okay. Right? Like it, doesn't, it doesn't affect us, it doesn't like kill us in production, and it's great that we've got more capacity. Uh, doing scale testing on things, again, like if you've got a thing where it's okay for you to spin up a thousand VMs in the cloud because it's not gonna like kill somebody's profit margins, uh, that's, that's kind of a, a really cool thing. Data analytics and AI ML, these same things, these intensive, cool, sort of cutting edge things, these are great workloads to, to try out on uh, on, 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 a, on such a cloud, right? These are things where we can collaborate on the, on the cloud, but then having load on that cloud is useful to the people collaborating on the running of the cloud because a, a big cloud that doesn't have any users, well, you're not really getting any feedback on how it works at scale then, are you? Uh, so you've gotta have this virtual circle, but this gives us an opportunity to both give resources to potentially under-resourced research projects as well as learn from the, from the operation of it uh, itself. Um, uh, we're, we're into some things we've learned, so I think it's about time for me to, is that, is that, am I, is that your slide? You can do this as okay. well if you want. But. Um, yeah, we're, we're getting close to his turn, and I, I will just keep running my mouth, uh, <laughs> so I'm, try, I'm trying to, to be cognizant of that. Um, uh, uh, but yeah, so we've got, we've got a, a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of alternatives, um, uh, but, but learning and operating a broad, like, the operators don't want to sit out there and, and learn about running my uh, OpenStack on top of MySQL uh, and Postgres. Uh, nobody does that. Like that's a, that's a terrible idea as an operator of an actual service. You run uh, the, the service that you're, the way you're going to run it. And doing things like uh, running some of the newer OpenStack services, maybe even before they're ready, well, that's not a thing you're going to do in a, in a commercial public cloud because you would, all of a sudden you've got customers on the hook for that. Um, so it's a thing that you can learn. Um, it, individually, it's hard for a lot of the smaller clouds to get the, the types of, of scale that we're talking about for doing massive scale testing. Um, uh, and and there's, just, there's just other things. So um, the, the, without, basically, you know, the, the highlighted thing there is the, the sort of key thing. Without having real users and real workloads, but without collaborating on the running of that, there's a, there's a real informational, uh, a real informational missed opportunity. Uh, and, and then it makes it harder for us as a community to address real world, real customer usage, right? Without, without sort of an intermediary uh, uh, on, our, on our behalf. Um, with that, I'm gonna let him talk and I'm gonna try and stop talking. So cool. It's not really gonna work. Uh, I'm not gonna let uh, him really talk. <laughs> I'm gonna try, I promise. Thanks, Monty, for doing uh, pretty good motivation on why, we, why you should have a, a, an OCX. I yeah. will now try to speak about how we're trying to turn this vision of an open cloud exchange uh, and how we're trying to make it real. So we're a nonprofit and we have a very small team. So it's three developers, uh, one operator, and a bunch of student minions who come and go all the time. And even though uh, we are trying to build this as a nonprofit, we still want it to be sustainable, so we want to charge and have actual customers on top of it. Uh, this all means that we should have chargeback, showback, building reporting, all of these features which a public cloud generally has are required in our cloud as well. And OpenStack was not really built with these things from the get-go and in mind, and that's one thing where the collaboration that we're having with OpenStack and the upstream and everyone else is so important. So uh, what is the MOC? It's a collaboration between uh, five universities of the Boston area, so it's UMass, uh, Harvard, MIT, Boston University, and Northeastern. But not only that, it's also a lot of industry collaborators. Uh, and one of the things that makes us special is the MGHPCC, which is a huge data center hosted out of Olioki. Uh, it has hundreds of thousands, uh, space for hundreds of thousands of cores with room to grow. And 
another cool thing about the Boston area is that if you take all the Pacific Research Platform and you shrink it to the size of a building, you basically have the MGPCC, which is where we're hosted from. So what are the capabilities which we have to build to have an OCX? for an, like an MVP of an OCX. So first, we need an elastic secure infrastructure for on-demand hardware use, a production OpenStack Ceph and Kubernetes services for both end users and high-level service offerings, single sign-on, uh, resource federation between multiple OpenStack services, a pricing guide and billing system, and user management. So, and once all of that is done, uh, participants will be able to deploy their own hardware, uh, deploy services on top of hardware, allocated dynamically for that purpose, and charge for the services. So, build a sustainable marketplace. So, let's go one by one. So, an elastic secure infrastructure for demand hardware use. We actually have built that. Uh, it's called M2. It's built on top of Hill, which is a service we have uh, developed, which does network isolation at the switch level. So each node gets its own VLAN, and uh, users communicate with an API to reserve nodes and give them back to a pool of shared nodes. We also have M2, which is network booting and image management. And uh, one of the cool things about network booting is that it allows you to have VM-style image management, so you can uh, suspend the VM, uh, suspend a, a bare metal machine, give it back to the pool of, uh, of machines, then get it back and use it for something else, and assume the job you were doing after you get it back without even noticing. And we're also working on having a snapshotting of the memory so you could just pick up exactly where you left off. Uh, but this wouldn't really be useful if it wasn't safe. Like, say you gave a machine up and then you got it back and someone messed up with the firmware. So we're working on Bolted, which is a project which combines Heal M2 and Kilime attestation from uh, MIT Lincoln Labs to make sure that uh, bare metal machines weren't tampered with the time that you gave them back. And you can do this verification. You don't have to trust someone else. Uh, so that was the first one. Then you need a production open, production open stack, Ceph and Kubernetes, which is harder than it sounds, trust me. So uh, we what? started... Yeah. It's easy. Of course. <laughs> so we started with uh, 500 cores, but uh, an, uh, a 1,600 cores will soon be available. We started at Kilo, and we have Pike now. Upgrading was a rough process because we were using Puppet manifests from the Kilo era and we just forked them and s slowly started patching them up to support Pike. And this grew very, very hard. And now we're planning a redeployment with Pike with all supported bits. Uh, so we won't have to mess anymore with changing Puppet manifests to that extent that we have. We also have a Pure Research OpenStack Cloud. Uh, which we only mostly reserve for researchers, and it has GPU nodes and stuff like that. Uh, but we do not support it as much as the pure, as the production cloud. We also have an OpenShift running on top of OpenStack, and upgrades with it have been pretty hit or miss, going from one version to another. It's almost like you're saying that upgrades are hard. Upgrades are always hard. <laughs> <laughs> So, lessons learned, uh, Ceph is hard. We got bitten by the Velos of Raptors. And user support is very time consuming, especially when you have a team of one ops. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, SSO. So yeah, we want users to come in and have one single account, and with that account be able to use the, our multiple production, uh, open, our OpenStack clouds, OpenShift, and the other services which we deploy, like Dataverse, Open Data Hub, et cetera. So uh, we have federated with InCommon, which is a federation of universities, and we uh, use Keycloak as an IDP proxy, so users uh, go into OpenStack, they get redirected to Keycloak, and then Keycloak sends them back to, to InCommon, and their Keycloak session is valid for all the, open uh, all the MOC services that we have deployed on the cloud. This was, of course, more complicated than it looks, because Keycloak doesn't really support federations, so we had to build another IDP proxy layer, which is composed of Shibboleth and simple SAML PHP. Hopefully, with, uh, we will be able to roll this into Keystone. Uh, we are talking with uh, other Keystone folks about this, and 
uh, some specs will be pushed up and for review and you can take a look at them and contribute to the development, open source development process. Yeah, there is in fact a talk about that. Do you keep going and I'll <laughs> find it in a second. Uh, so uh, it's all good. Now a user is able to log in and come to uh, each of the services. But what if they want to combine the resources they have in one OpenStack cloud with another OpenStack cloud or with OpenShift or use their data sets from Dataverse into OpenStack? Uh, for that, we have uh, built Resource Federation. So uh, say a user has, so the MOC isn't really like a single cloud, but uh, think of it as a federation of smaller clouds. So BU runs their own infrastructure, Northeastern runs their own infrastructure, MIT runs their own infrastructure. And a user has a machine which is running on BU and wants to attach a volume running from Northeastern. Uh, through resource federation, they should be able to accomplish this. And for this purpose, uh, we have worked, uh, we have built a mix and match, which is an open source API proxy. Uh, it does keystone to keystone federation between uh, uh, OpenStack clouds and uh, forwards API requests to the appropriate deployment. So the Nova service will be able to use Cinder volumes from a different service uh, in a different cloud. And wow, we went through four. Now there's five and six. So probably the harder ones. <laughs> uh, pricing guide and billing system. And I guess you're all curious to know how the pricing would work. And we actually expect to be able to charge half or one third of uh, commercial big clouds. And uh, we also need to figure out all the other models because research is different. So sometimes uh, uh, researchers uh, have grants for purchasing hardware but do not get grants for uh, subscribing to clouds. So we should have a model where we allow them to set up uh, their hardware into our cloud and then they can use that for credits or we're still working on this but uh, there's a lot of uh, cool uh, things to think about and yeah of course users want to have something that works and lets them solve a problem and that's especially true for researchers which have very strict deadlines so uh, in terms of billing it should be like per project, the organization uh, which is sponsoring the project. Well, this is boring stuff, but it's very hard to get all this information. Uh, projects then should be aggregated by institution because the institution should receive the bill for all the projects that they are using. And we have succeeded in proving that those 10,000 ways will not work. It actually was so much harder than we expected, especially gathering telemetry data from OpenStack. When we started uh, about three and a half years ago, Silometer was very slow and it made our network crash. Uh, we investigated Monasca, then we switched back to Silometer because uh, a tool we tried to use to solve that issue required it, but it didn't fit our use case, and so now we're back to reinventing the wheel yet again. And it would be so much better if we could con uh, work with the OpenStack community to uh, have this upstream. Yes, this is the area where we'll, we'll need the most help. Then user management system. Uh, you as a user or I as a user want to go into the open, uh, mass open cloud, sign up for multiple services, and when I leave, I want my resources to be automatically returned for other users. This is one of the harder problems in OpenStack, especially reclaiming the resources. And this is another area where we should collaborate with uh, with the OpenStack community, and we actually have Adrian Terjak here who developed Adjutant, which should help us optimize or build these workflows into an actual official OpenStack project, rather than yet again reinventing the wheel. Yeah, I think there's a session this week on that too, right? Like auto deleting or deleting cleanup. Yeah, it's next. It's next. Excellent. Good. So yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the Inter Identity Federation proxy thing is tomorrow at 11:40. By the way. Yeah, so one important missing feature in OpenStack is that users of projects and organizations should be able to sign up for resources without requiring human intervention. Everyone has gone through that stage of their OpenStack career where they had to write this. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should do something about that. <laughs> Yay! 
So other stuff we've been working on, we have a bunch of FPGAs and GPUs into OpenStack and OpenShift. We are reaching out to startups in the area, so our audience is not just researchers and students, but it's also startups and manufacturers and every user which has an interest in using our open cloud. And uh, two research IT organizations which want to offload their, their uh, infrastructure or help us in collaborative running our infrastructure. Uh, more things we've learned, yeah. Uh, every time someone says a feature will work, uh, make sure that someone has tried it before actually deploying it into production. <laughs> it's a very important question. And if your only senior infrastructure engineer is out of town, run. What, what is here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, the community has always been incredibly supportive and giving, so thanks to every one of you who is here and who has helped us. And, Thanks a lot, and we still want your help, so we're not fully uh, through the hardest parts yet. What sorts of things do you need? Uh, user, uh, developers, money, everything you can throw at us, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> and do, do you need more requirements? You go with use cases? Uh, you just throw some use cases over the, over the wall at you. Would that be helpful? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> We're already swimming in use cases. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's oh, yeah. a link there to a very horribly designed website. Uh, that's something we may also need help in. But yeah. <laughs> so, well, thanks everyone. Yeah. And we are at time. So we actually, I think, have we have zero minutes for questions. Uh, so if anybody would like to, to, to ask, we could probably squeeze one in before they kill us uh, for going over time. Yes, go for it. G'day. Um, I was just wondering uh, around a platform, you look at you know, AWS and you know, even iTunes and all that sort of thing, it's very much about the content, the applications. Is there any thinking in the community around creating like a application repository sort of for this open state community, like a Juju Charms or a doing, but so connecting, connecting these pop, uh, community clouds into that? So, uh, Interesting question. Um, I know that there was, a, so there was a thing uh, that doesn't exist anymore um, uh, called, you know, there's the Murano thing, but there was a public Murano repository uh, that Olaf was PTL of for a second. I can't remember the name of it, but yeah. That, so that uh, actually at the, that was spun up around the first Vancouver summit. Um, so somebody sort of started going down that, that road. Uh, and unfortunately, it didn't get anywhere. Um, so it's one of those sort of things where it's a really good idea, um, uh, and nobody showed up with content, uh, essentially. So um, it, it would probably be really worthwhile to, um, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna hand uh, uh, Christy another, another use case, but, um, but I, I do think that's, a, no, that's it's, definitely it's a thing that would be really helpful. It's an important because if we build a marketplace of services, like the service doesn't have to be OpenStack, it can be uh, an application. Like if you were in yesterday's keynotes, you saw Red Hat talk about Chris. Uh, it's an application uh, for radiologists to consult and, and run uh, processing jobs in our cloud. So that's one type of application that can be exposed to users. Also, if, if the, the, the pricing stuff works, then people offering their services in our cloud, cloud also will get money back. So there's more of an incentive to provide services, whereas in Murano, probably, you get nothing except yeah. kudos. So, <laughs> Which uh, probably not as great. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if people get money out of it, people will uh, provide their services, same as the App Store and uh, other kind of stuff. Yeah. Cool. I think they're going to kick us out of here. So thank you very much.